What's up guys? Welcome back to another video in this series. Today's video is going to focus on body fat percentages at the University of South Florida. I am currently a master's student at the University of South Florida and a graduate teaching assistant. So with this job comes my volunteer in the University of South Florida Physique Enhancement Lab, which is run by Dr. Bill Campbell and his Instagram should be here below. My role in his lab is Lab Operations Director for the Fall of 2020 and Spring of 2021 year. And then following that, in the Fall of 2021 to Spring of 2022, I will take over the position as Research Coordinator with a team of other people to lead the lab. So with this opportunity comes my role as the Skinfold and Ultrasound Technician for most of the research studies conducted in the years of 2020 to 2022. So to help further develop my skills, I invited Dr. Lane Norton into the Physique Enhancement Lab. I reached out to Lane at the end of his Shred by Lane cut in which he lost a substantial amount of body fat and I wanted to bring him in and test his body fat and give that information to him. The techniques that I used to test his body fat were skinfold and A-mode ultrasound. You may have heard of different techniques like skinfold, ultrasound, DEXA, uh, to measure somebody's body fat percentage. But I do want to inform you, there is no exact or most accurate way to measure body fat percentages as these tests are estimates of one's body fat percentages and these ways to measure body fat percentage can be used to gauge progress over time. These ways to assess somebody's body fat percentage are based on a variety of different factors. Things like one's age, height, weight, and also different equations are factored into this estimation of body fat. A-mode ultrasound measures how much tissue is at the surface and actually uses sound waves to travel through the layer of body fat, which bounces off and comes back, uh, which is displayed on the screen on the device. A-mode ultrasound, I believe, is the most accurate means of measuring body fat percentage due to its ability to be really cheap. It takes about 20 to 25 minutes total, and it's quite accurate if you have a reliable technician. Uh, the only pitfall of these means of body fat percentages via skinfold and ultrasound are there really is no standardized approach in measuring these things. So my biggest recommendation is having the same technician do your uh, measurements over a period of time to get the most accurate and reliable results possible. I use Skinfold as a way to double check my ultrasound measurements. What do I mean by double checking my ultrasound measurements? So for ultrasound, we have a sound wave traveling through one layer of skin. And for Skinfold, you are literally taking somebody's skin, pinching the top of their body fat, and using a caliper as a means to measure um, in millimeters the amount of body fat that is here. So when I pinch my skin, I'm literally pinching two layers of body fat. Uh, so ideally, in some of the measurements, you should see about one-thirds to two-thirds times the amount of somebody's measured ultrasound measurements. So, for example, if I had an ultrasound measurement of 4.6 for some site, um, for skinfold, I expect to see around 7 to 8 millimeters for the same measurement. So, this just allows me to basically double check my ability to do my job really, really well. So four weeks ago, I have Lane's skinfold and ultrasound results uh, done at the end of his cut. Four weeks ago, his skinfold measurements came out to be 9.4% body fat and his old ultrasound measurements came out to be around 9.6% body fat at the end of his fat loss phase. After ending his cut, Lane took his calories back to maintenance, which was designed by his app, Carbon Diet Coach. So I believe, what I remember is the app was having him eat over 
a thousand calories more than what he was dieting on. So this approach is also termed as a recovery diet. Uh, recovery and reverse diet are technically the same things. So the purpose of this is to get out of that negative energy balance. You are no longer dieting. So you are no longer going to be in a caloric deficit. In a recovery and reverse diet is a strategic approach to get out of that. So four weeks later, I got invited to BioLane headquarters to retake Lane's skinfold and ultrasound measurement after four weeks of no longer dieting. So this is the experience that we had and the measurements that I remeasured. headquarters boop, boop. kind of a big deal <laughs> uh, so a month ago I did his body fat percentages with skinfold and ultrasound at USF um, and now I'm back a month later and Lane has ended his diet and we're going to see if he has been successful or not with gaining or losing body fat yeah so I after the diet was over I just switched to maintenance mm -hmm. on our app uh, carbon diet coach uh, <laughs> And, uh, but since then, I mean, so the week after, you know, it's kind of concerning because that's Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And then all, you know, we traveled to Evansville. We spent that time with my parents. And then also I've had a birthday and we've yeah. had like celebrations pretty much every weekend, mm -hmm. like Christmas parties and everything. But, um, yeah, I guess mm -hmm. we'll drum roll. All right. So we've got the results. Brooke, what do we got? You basically have the best skinfold and ultrasound technician on the planet. Oh, uh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> So on skinfold last time, Lane averaged about 9.35% body fat. Um, and then this time around when we did a skinfold, he was around 8, 8.5% body fat. 8.3. So like 1.1% 1 1 body fat reduction based on skinfold. So yeah, based on skinfold, Lane is actually losing body fat and he's eating more. How many more calories are you eating right now, Lane? Uh, well, so my average caloric intake uh, on my, during the week, my last deficit was really aggressive. It was around 2580 calories and now I'm actually at 3580. Um, so I, when I switched to maintenance mm -hmm. in the app, the first week I actually lost some weight. Right. And so since I lost outside of the boundary of what our app allows for maintenance, it actually bumped my calories up and it bumped me up to, I think I'm 3580 right now. So I'm actually a thousand calories higher than when I ended my diet. So was it like 2500, 3500 or was it like a gradual, like, hey, so, we'll add 200 this week and... So I switched to maintenance. So it took me up to what our app will track, what the predicted maintenance is based uh -huh. on how much weight you've been losing or gaining versus your caloric intake. Mm -hmm. So it... it Told me 3,400, and I'm like, oh, that's a big jump, but I did it. You just I, immediately jumped right I to immediately it. jumped up and did not gain any weight. So, and then um, the next uh, the next week, it actually bumped me again huh. by about 200 calories because I was outside the boundary mm -hmm. and had, uh, had actually lost weight. So, like, what's the weight difference now from, like, four weeks ago to, like, the weight... Um, 203 was today, I think. Yeah, so 203 today, on average, I'm around 203. Okay. To, today is a little bit higher weigh in for me. Uh -huh. um, but my average this week is probably just under, t like right around 202 and a half. Okay. Something like that. Okay. So essentially, the exact same I weighed in right. at the photo shoot. Um, I also want to ask one more question Have you changed anything like cardio, resistance training? Like, do you feel like you're training harder? Um, No, I wouldn't say so. In fact, I would say I'm actually. 
if anything, I've backed off a little bit because I've had some like nagging, a little bit of injuries mm -hmm. and whatnot. I have made sure that I've maintained my step counts. Like that's something yeah. I've been really rigorous about. We took we took a deload for the week of Thanksgiving. Yeah, remember? Yeah, so we've we taken did, some we did, time. Yeah, off. We actually trained less. Yeah, but we did. We did add in some extra steps um, to try and make up for that a little bit, but. Um, I don't think it made up for it in terms of energy expenditure. So, so yeah, like, if anything, it's been a little bit less. So like for deload, like you still trained, but you just didn't you yeah. decrease the volume. Is yeah, decrease the volume, and, and and that particular week we only trained twice, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So his old ultrasound was nine point six, oh, nine point five five percent, and his new ultrasound data um, reveals uh, about eight point nine percent. Eight point nine percent. Yeah. Eight point eight five. Yeah. So that's about a 0.7% decrease in body fat while eating more and doing less. Like And we want to, I think we, it's important to be clear, like a lot of people would say, well, you, are you saying you can violate the laws of thermodynamics? Because, you know, I talk, we talk a lot about energy balance right. and whatnot. And of course not. Nobody's yeah. violating the laws of, or, or, of um, energy balance. But I think what I've seen with some of my clients, and I'd be interested to take your perspective, is like one, sometimes people are able to train harder. So maybe I, even though I don't feel like I'm right. training as much, maybe I actually am training harder. Mm -hmm. who, who knows? Um, also, when you increase food, it is possible that um, I'm just fidgeting more as well. Yeah, like increasing your needs. Non-exercise activity thermogenesis. That is a big, like I definitely noticed anecdotally that final week, yeah. I was definitely moving less. Like I, my step counts were high, but my little movements were mm -hmm. much less. Now I notice that those movements are, are kind of coming back. Yeah. So we don't usually think about that as like an endogenous metabolic rate, right. but that's not something you can really control. That's very, sub, that's very subconscious. Yeah. Um, so I think that, and also, perhaps when you're increasing food within a certain range, you know the the increase in energy expenditure in response to that maybe sometimes exceeds Increased. the amount of food that you that you yeah, actually yeah. consume. Well, well, it makes sense because you're spending all this time dieting and you're just going deeper and deeper and deeper into a negative energy balance over time. So the idea of the reverse or recovery mm -hmm. type diet is to alleviate the en negative energy balance. So by you taking it right back to maintenance, you're really not going super into a positive. So you could probably yeah. eat more, expect to gain like a little bit of body, like a little bit of weight. But like if that's not your goal, then it's not necessary. I think the other thing to think about too is we got to think about these are percentages, right? Yes. So I just I just realized this. So if I'm I gain some lean body mass, mm -hmm. it's possible that some of that's water, mm -hmm. right? In fact, a lot of it's probably water. So gain back some lean body mass. So by default, if my weight stays the same, it has to go from fat mass, right? Yeah. So it is possible that just by that displacement uh, explains some of these results. But I think what we can certainly say is I have, definitely haven't gained body fat. No. And you actually even commented. Visually, like I, laying like I was doing this body fat percentage and I'm like laying like you look leaner. Like I visually see the difference from a month ago. Yeah, um, but and even then, like we know with competitors, like if they're really super depleted, but then mm -hmm. we start feeding them, mm -hmm. they'll actually, even though they don't maybe lose body fat, they look leaner yeah. because they filled out, they have more glycogen, it's uh -huh. press, their their muscles now press against the skin a little mm -hmm. bit more. So yeah, I think it's interesting results. You know, I'm not ready to like yeah. start start like trumpeting my own horn and say I figured out the the perfect way to do a right. recomp. You know, you could get jacked and shredded doing what I've done, but it's it's cool. Well, like in terms of that as well, like, are you hungry? Like, do you feel like, are you starving at maintenance? So here's the interesting thing. Um, I know I, I don't feel hungry generally. Mm -hmm. I'm being honest. I'm a little more food focused now than I was when I was, you know, 30 pounds heavier, even yeah. though I'm eating about the same now. Um, but I will tell you that like, if I go a day or two into a deficit or even like today, so I didn't really eat much right. so far throughout the day today because I'm training in the afternoon and because I've just been busy. Um, but I actually, like when I was coming in here, I was actually feeling kind of a little bit low energy uh -huh. and a little bit hungry. Uh -huh. So I think what it is is now being at this lower body fat, previously when I was 30 pounds heavier, if I would kind of like go a day without really eating much, mm -hmm. I, it didn't bother me at all. I didn't feel it at all. I think it's like a, I'm not gonna say like a consequence, but like a byproduct of being lean. If you're lean, like you're generally more hungry. 
Yeah. That's how I kind of, no, I, I agree my with that. experience. Like. I agree. So I, I think that that's, you know, it's all interesting stuff. I think the cool thing is, you know, I've gone through, you know, various holidays. Mm -hmm. I, you know, we went to Evansville to visit yeah. my family. I had fried chicken, pizza, you know, Thanksgiving dinner with pie, right. and all this kind of stuff. I didn't avoid any food. You hit your macros though, hit, right? Hit my macros, right. you know, that sort of thing. But I think it just shows like consistency, right? Like people think, yeah. people tend to be like really all or nothing. So they're mm -hmm. like either all in and they finish a cut and they're like, oh yeah, I'm done. All right, Thanksgiving, and then like maybe they start overeating a little bit. Instead of like pulling it back in, they just go, ah, oh, screw it right. and go crazy. Whereas I know, and I, I tell people, I'm like, you know, I trust the process. Yeah. So having a bad weigh-in or having a, you know, I had one this week that was a little bit elevated and like, I didn't freak out. Yeah. I mean, I was like, I'm like, listen, I'm a little bit annoyed because nobody wants to see that. Someone, <laughs> someone blamed my lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I trust the process and what happened was it came back down, you know? So yeah. um, I think when people don't trust the process, they do extreme things where they're like, you know, they're either in a really harsh deficit mm -hmm. or then they're just, you know, crazy overeating because they're like, well, if I, I can't eat these foods without gaining weight, so I might as well just eat as much as I want. Yeah. And in, in terms of like making a sustainable lifestyle, like you're literally like spending time with your family, you're prioritizing your physique while still it, being able to enjoy your life. Like, and that's, that's uh, what it's all about too. For sure. And I always tell people being 80% on a hundred percent of the time is better than being a hundred percent on fifty percent of the time, and the other fifty percent you're just going crazy. Yeah, exactly. I just want to say thanks to Lane for allowing me to be the physique scientist. Yeah, best world's best body comp analyst right here. <laughs> <laughs>